Welcome to Snake Island. In the last episode, I enjoyed a beautiful morning with a nutritious breakfast and following a nap in my hammock, I had a council meeting with Sally and Carl before continuing on to the next destination. This episode begins with another magnificent morning and some time of reflection as I approach the end of this grand adventure. for example to to volunteer to take control of the ship turn to page 26 you know if you decide 
something else. Turn to page 34. And, and so you'd be like, oh, what should I do? What should I do? And without looking ahead, and then and, and then you turn to the page and and it could be the final end. It could be it could be a, a simple quick story where actually you save yourselves really quick. Or you're you're saved by Coast Guard, for ex for example. Or maybe you uh, you make a choice and it leads to your death. Or you make a choice and it it just leads to a deeper adventure. And and that those situations keep coming up at the end of all the chapters. Where you have to make a decision and then see what the consequences are. I think deep down, in a lot of men, we really long to do something like this. Spend some time out alone in nature. It's really healing being out here. Despite all the cuts and, and the bites that I've had, the physical exhaustion from the hiking, the sunburn, those are all surface injuries. But deep down, the body's healing, and the spirit is healing, and the mind is healing. It's an amazing experience to be to experience true freedom now on the surface you might this may not appear to be freedom but if you're out in the wilderness and it's just you there are no laws to govern you other than the laws of God the laws of physics the laws of nature the laws that have existed always and always will, those don't change. The man's laws, they don't affect you out here. And I think that is something that just is so healing. It allows the body to heal because it just eliminates so much stress out of life. You know, even if I wanted to, I, and I had bills due today, I, I couldn't pay them. I can't. There's no way. So I don't worry about it. You know, I, uh, what's happening in the news, you know, the next killing, uh, political scandals, earthquake halfway around the world. I can't see it. I can't hear it. I don't know about it. life was really supposed to be. Today we're in an age where media, technology, makes it possible to know what happens on the other side of the world within seconds. Think about it, that's ridiculous. I mean, how much information does a person need? And how true is all that information? Here and now, that's what's going on here and now, <laughs> right here. When you get plugged back into society, you're taking in all the problems of the world on your, on your spirit and it affects you, it affects the way you think, your judgments, everything. When I meet people out here, it's just, it's just so, it's thrilling. Like, Hey, how you doing? You know, you're happy to see them. It's like, wow. You know, everyone's so friendly when I see them, you know. You don't see, I don't see a person very much when I'm out doing this. But you're thankful to see them. Whereas when I'm in the city, you don't want to see any more people. You're seeing thousands of people a day. away from media and technology. I think that's how it lets the body heal. And the spirit and mind
mind as well because you're not carrying the burden of the world. And we can't carry the burden of the world. So this gives the, the body, the mind, and the spirit rest just by being out here. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to hike or anything. Just hear the sounds. The only sounds are the wind, the waves, and occasionally some birds. Fishing has been particularly challenging here due to sharp edges on the reefs cutting my line, but I'm going to try one more time. That is unbelievable! The fish removed the hook from the swivel. How does that happen? Unfortunately, fishing on the rocks and the reefs is extremely difficult, especially with such light line, 10 pound test line. My line broke. That's enough. It's time to go. I gotta finish this journey. After another failed attempt at fishing, I pack my gear and hike the rugged coastline to Rosaka Beach. Rosaka is a favorite of mine for its wide sandy beach, good surf, and an abundant supply of coconuts. I am so fortunate to find these coconuts. It's so easy to harvest. That's a little one, so it's just going to be water. There it is. Oh my gosh. Playa Rosaka. Well, this is the end of my journey of traversing the entire island, all of it that is passable by foot. There's only two areas that I'm leaving out. That's Ensenada Onda, the big bay. The bay is surrounded by mangroves. And then there's one other part. I did it the very first time that I came to Isla Culebra. And that's Punta Flamenco. Punta Flamenco is impossible to get around along the shoreline. The waves just batter the cliffs there. There's very little walkable shoreline. And when I went, I climbed the slope and followed along the top of the cliffs, 
literally right on the edge of the cliffs holding on to branches and roots of sea grapes and other bushes and trees. It was super slow and exhausting, not to mention quite dangerous. And then once you do get all the way to the, uh, to the actual point, from there, the only way to get to Flamenco Beach is you gotta go through some real thorny bush. There are no trails, and you gotta go through some thick trees laced with princess vines. It's like a princess vine jungle. It's, and those vines are so strong, you cannot even push through them. And so I decided to spare that part of the journey. You know, I could stay here all day. I don't want to leave. This water feels incredible. And it's so clear. It's this beautiful, clear turquoise blue. And the waves just feel wonderful rolling over my body. And the sand is so soft. It's like walking on sugar. And the sun beating down. Oh, I got a good tan. <laughs> I got an island tan. I thought this trip would be enough for me. Turns out it really isn't. I feel like I have so much more to learn, so much more to see. It's amazing when you slow down the pace, how much there really is to see in this world, how much there really is to learn, to try to understand. From just the behavior of a, a simple crab, to the way the tides react with the moon. There's a plane coming by. You know, that's the only unnatural sound you'll, you'll hear out here. They carry a maximum of nine passengers delivering people to and from Isla Calabra. The weather is so beautiful. The feel of the breeze and the sound of the palm leaves twitching. You know what feels really good? It's when the ends of the palm leaf and they tickle your back. You just place your back next to them and the wind blows the ends of the palm leaves up against your skin. Oh, that's such a wonderful feeling. I feel really, really renewed from this trip. There were several very difficult moments. There were moments that I wished I was back in San Diego, back in my kitchen preparing some good wholesome food that I love to eat. Being out here and limited food, it's, it's a fast. I call it a wilderness fast. Where you just put your, yourself out in the wilderness and you live on what you find. Now I haven't done that entirely on this trip, but the amount of food that I brought with me was minimal. I found all kinds of things to eat. So I've had fish, I've eaten chitons, I ate sea urchin, I ate lots of sea grapes. I ate manjack. I ate coconuts. I also ate sea purslane. That was my wild diet here on Isla Culebra. Isla Culebra, thank you. Thank you for this experience. Thank you for this adventure. May God bless this island. May God always bless it and preserve it. It's a very special place holds a very special place in my heart and always will. I feel that this island is part of me and that I'm part of this island. Having an abundance of coconuts and the entire beach all to myself, I really had no desire to leave, but it was time to end this journey. There is a hard to find hidden trail that goes from Rosaka Beach to the end of a road that leads to town. After much searching under a canopy of trees and princess vines, I finally find it. And on the trail, a harmless racer snake to remind me that this is Snake Island. water. It's alright. It's all downhill from here. Back to town.
Thank you. Thank you so much for watching my Snake Island Survival Adventure series. The series has come to an end, but please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more adventure videos coming in the near future. Carl thanks you too. Well, Carl, that's a wrap. Let's clean this place up now.